Hey guys, welcome back to Tea with Phil and Jen. In today's video, we're gonna taste two yellow teas side by side while we talk about this lesser known tea type. Yeah, and I can't wait to get to it, so I'm gonna make this super quick. If you're new to the channel, click that subscribe button and don't forget to click the notification bell as well so you'll know whenever we release new videos. Now let's dive into these awesome teas. Can't wait. So let's have a look at the uh, dry leaf first. Mm. Starting with Dai Singh. Mm. You can see, uh, well, let's compare them. You can see the Dai Yutsing is a little bit um, greener right away. This has right. a little green tinge. Yeah, even though both color are pretty dark, Very I dark, found yeah. the, uh, the, the Huang Da Cha slightly to the yellow, uh, red brown red kind of brownish side, while this one has almost um, green black more. But yeah. still, both are dark. There's really dark color. A good roast on both. Mm -hmm. And Dai Yutsing has a bigger leaves. Mm, definitely bigger leaves and uh, doesn't have the the i'm jumping ahead a little bit but you okay. even on the dry leaf the the the, the um Huang Da cha has a little more of a roasty nose right off the bat right right mm. let's get to warm up the guy one and uh, yeah, get the real smell real there. smell so the um the tea i used today i measured uh, three grams since we're doing a side by side do a little mm. bit more a little bit more methodical methodical mm. if you know us you know that we often uh, don't measure out the tea we're all about intuitive brewing and just by feel but when we're side by side we like to give everybody mm -hmm. kind of a fair shake oh no chips no good we'll check later <laughs> okay Want to have a smell of the dry leaf? Absolutely. I'm going to start with the Dai Yutsing because I felt like it might be a little bit... Mm. Oh, that has a hint of floral and some nice, uh, some really nice, almost sweet, maybe butter cookie. Meadowy, mm, floral, I'll let you have a roll at that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to switch to the Huang Da Cha now. Sweet. Very sweet, that one, huh? Mm. A hint of a floral, like you said. Mm -hmm. If there's something in common, I would say the Dai Yuching ha has a fresh straw hint, uh, and this has dry straw hints. Mm -hmm. But from there on in, it's all, it's all different. This has a bit of it chocolatey almost dark chocolate aroma and uh it's a little bit more bold than the diet mm. Mm. looking forward to getting these almost a up. little bit of coffee notes mm. yes yes that's a good that's definitely a good one Which teacup do you want to use? Um, you can choose which is which. I'll just keep track. Okay. One thing I really love about Huang Da Cha is that bolder coffee note you mentioned. It really tends to make this tea um, easy for people to drink, especially when they're getting started with tea. Mm. Mm. Oh, even more, even more butter cookie coming now, like pastries sweetness yeah oh yeah and uh and a and nice the... light gold liquor compared to the more amber of the right it's quite different as the liquor color mm. the huang da cha definitely has that sort of coffee-esque aroma that you got on the dry leaf and something almost a little bit um tannic like almost like a tannin in the coffee. Mm. I'm gonna start with the Dai Yutsing for a sip. I already sipped because the smell really like really mm. sweet and uh, Inviting, seductive. Right? Yes, okay. seductive. Oh, okay. No, <laughs> seductive sounds perfect. better. It's seductive. Like you smell that. It's hard not to sip. I just uh, subconscious. I smell it. I drink it. Yeah.
The sweetness is still is there in the liquor as well, but in a very interesting way. It's not an overt sweetness. It's mixed in with the liquor and it's the floral, floral. Almost uh, imaginary, like a floral, like nectar sweet. Right, good like, one. Because nectar, it yeah, has hint. that, uh, yeah, floral there, and um, it has that, uh, yeah, floral, refreshing, watery. But then it has that little teaser of sweet. Mm, mm, absolutely. Mm. I like the toastiness of the Huang Da Cha. Oh yeah, it reaches right up out of the uh, where the where the Da Ye Tsing liquor was a little bit more subtle and maybe seductive, mm. like you pointed out. The the Huang Da Cha liquor is really um, it's right there. And very crisp. Yeah. I found that in terms of mouthfeel, this one is uh, the Da Ye Qing is more mellowy. Mellow, mellow smooth, soft. silky. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Huang Da Cha is crisp. Crisp, very brisk. Very brisk. Yeah. Yes, yes. Those. Um, both mm. are very refreshing, but in very, it's interesting to have them side by side. Widely different way of refreshing. Right. You didn't think refreshing could have so many different angles. Mm. 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 There's some multi multi grains in here too. Multi grains with those chocolatey coffee notes. Mm. 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 Definitely glad I started with the Da Ye Tsing in terms of tasting. Them. Absolutely, Da Ye Tsing is almost uh, give you that. Uh, uh, similarity with uh, green tea-ish mm. because uh, uh, it's um, um, more delicate. Um, the this is more not say traditional yellow tea process, but this is uh, what you would expect in a lot of yellow tea. But right. some yellow tea would have like Huang Da Cha, which is a slight, uh, has that uh, toastiness in the mm -hmm. end. So as yellow tea goes, uh, it means uh, in, compared to green tea. It means it's slightly oxidized. Like right. in the process, there is a step to help increase a little bit of oxidization in the tea leaves so that when we taste it, compared to green tea, the taste would be a little bit mellower. Mm -hmm. Soften the edges kind of that's thing. That's right, that's mm. right. Yeah. I and it's actually a quite a, a old, ancient, Traditional, like it has quite a history. It's not a, uh, just a recent invention right. or stuff. It actually first recorded uh, in books uh, in Ming Dynasty, which dates back uh, 400 Ooh, that's years. That's longer than I thought, even. Wow. Mm. It actually writes about how it was plucked, uh, how it was harvested and brewed. Wow. So yeah, it has quite a history. That's why if you look for yellow tea in China, there are many regions that produce that, like Sichuan province or Hunan, Hubei province, Zhejiang, Anhui. You will find uh, yellow tea in a lot of uh, right. provinces. Now I've heard some stories about how this may have been sort of discovered or found but uh is that is there is that a is that actually mm. part of the chinese history of yellow tea or are those just stories well this because i heard it was a bit Hersey. of a blooper yeah it's like right? when they're doing the right. uh, pan fried green tea and uh, oops by accident they made a mistake or discovered that huh when we uh, were a little bit like uh, didn't uh, uh, finish the green tea in, in time it has a little oxid uh, oxidization and it didn't taste so bad. It actually... It didn't wreck the batch. Yes, it okay. actually become a new type. So absolutely discovered by accident during the... Especially, I think it was a pan-fired, pan-fired, okay. pan-fired green tea mm. process. Mm. I noticed in the bottom cup, just as we finished the last infusion, I got two distinct, again, two very distinct mm. um, sort of noses. The Da Ye Tsing has mm. sort of a stinky flower bottom cup. Mm. It smells this. And the smell Huang Da Cha yeah. had more of a brown sugary bottom cup. 
Wow. It's really pleasant floral. Pleasant thing. floral. I almost want to name the flower, but I can't quite get it. Not. It's not. Definitely not rose, but in the orchid domain almost. <sighs> yes. Like a creamy floral. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't have that creamy. I didn't find this creamy. For me, it was more refreshing, like uh, a sweet. Bold. Mm. Floral. It wasn't because creamy floral. I would expect something heavier. Uh, a little more sultry. But the, yeah, but yeah, this is still more light, light mm. and sweet floral. Actually, very pleasant smell. I really love that. And yeah, it really jumps out at you. It's not. Uh, mm. It's not like hard to dig out. Let me try this one. Almost like a corn, yeah. like a sweet corn. Yeah, I get malted green. Malted green, okay, okay. Those kind of uh, tones, um, heavier, mm. uh, definitely heavier. It almost uh, reminds me of like a Huangshan Maofeng, that kind of uh, uh, mm. light, green tea, but there's something more to it that gives that a little bit more body. Hmm. I mean the Daya Daya Ye I'm really st stricken by the uh, boldness of this. Like this mm. is a really, I feel like this one would be a great one with, with, uh, pair, for pairing with food. This one can stand up to a pretty good uh, presentation. Mm. Uh, maybe even breakfast. Like it's, it also has that uh, sort of almost... Um, um, we often do this with the dessert, though not breakfast, mm. like a, a meal, we do that with a yeah. butter cookie. Would that be great really... with dessert too, yeah, yeah. butter cookies or the, um, or the shortbreads that I make. Mm. Okay. Let's do the third infusion, I think. Nice. Yes, sir. Ma'am. Sorry. <laughs> sir, because I'm excited. Third infusion. Oh, you could smell the Huang Da Chao when you just put the lid on it, waft it over here. Mm. That roasty coffee smell. I love that. That amber liquor is so bright. Light amber, I would say. Light amber, yeah. Yellow gold. Bronze, copper. Mm. What do you think? Gold. Mm. Well, the other one is more of a. Um... <laughs> See, I would call the other one gold. Gold, yeah. Right, and then I would lean towards amber for this one. Twenty-four but... K gold. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so both the liquor you can see is uh, actually to the yellow side, even though this one looks lighter and uh, compared to this one, this one you feel like a Daiyatin's liquor is more to the greener side. Mm -hmm, definitely. Right? But both are has that uh, yellow tone. So mm -hmm. that's one of the characteristics of uh, yellow tea, which is a uh, yellow liquor. In Chinese, we call that uh, Huang Tang Huang Ye, means yellow soup, aka the tea liquor and uh, yellow leaf. Mm -hmm, right. Yeah. But you notice the dry leaf it wasn't quite yellow and stuff. So that leaf a lot of time refers to the brood leaf. Right. Oh, it still has that multi, multi grain plus that chocolatey coffee. Mm. Really? Yeah, it's so sweet smell. It's oh, the Daya Ching has yeah, got that sweet, yeah. That, that is like, uh, almost like a uh, honey, honey kind of a um, sweet Like smell. honey water, not as uh, thick as like pure honey smell, but we sometimes have honey water in the morning mm. and it has that kind of light. Mm. And you also get some floral off that similar to this. Mm. Mm. I love how mellow, how smooth, like soft, how soft the liquor is. Right. It almost glides down the throat really mm -hmm. just. 
And not that green tea is harsh, but I, it's almost shocking how, although the process are quite similar, how the tasting profile is so different and so altered mm. by that. Mm. So speaking of the, the process, the... And many people actually were really curious about what's yellow tea, like what's so sure, special. Sure, what's the difference or what is yeah, yellow tea? Yeah. We get that all the time. And that's that special step in yellow tea that called yellowing. Yeah, um, it's actually, there's just, compared to green tea, there's only one extra step and that is mm. the yellowing step. Unfortunately, if I just tell you, oh, the difference is yellowing, it really doesn't tell you much. So what is yellowing? So unlike green tea, where they're really, their focus is really on making sure the tea is not oxidized at all. Mm. They wanna get that kill green done uh, as quickly and as fully as possible. Yellow tea actually has, in the yellowing step, they actually purposefully let those leaves oxidize a little bit. And that's the tricky part, is letting them oxidize not too much, but also not too little, so you get that. Controlled, so it yeah. doesn't wreck the batch, but still give that a great aroma, great, like a soften the mouth feel. Yeah. That's the technical part. Yeah, very, very technical. Mm, mm. Absolutely. These guys nailed it, I have to say. Cheers to the producers. <laughs> Mm. The floral in the Dai Sing is now taking on a bit of a polleny aspect. Mm. I'm getting kind of a really uh, still clean and bright, but uh, even more uh, thick almost, I guess. Mm. Mm. You're right. Very different profile mm. compared to the Huang Da Cha. Mm, the smell changed. Huang Da Cha's uh, leaf smell changed. Oh yeah, I really like the this. that light floral is really yes. delightful. Mm. I'm just letting it build up a bit. That now has a bit of floral too. Yeah, yeah. compare mm. Mm. this was this is a light sweet floral still though this is more of those little I don't want to say stinky flowers but more like those metal flowers like a pure floral floral not sweet floral if that makes any mm. sense like it's really this is the kind of a lovely scent that I would want my house to smell like because it's a scented so gentle and mm. elegant that's not overwhelming. It's not gonna right. make me dizzy because it's so... <laughs> we'll, make, we'll make your eyes water. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> and so lovely, just uplifting. Yeah. Even though these two teas taste and smells and everything so differently, they actually can call, both can call the Huang Da Cha. Oh, wow. Yes, I, I mentioned that a little before. I was like, although you, they have different names, but they can also be known as the same tea because how we categorize yellow tea is almost similar to white tea. Like in white tea, we know Shoumei tells you the grade, right. Bai Mudan, Bai Hao Yingzheng also tells you the plucking standard, the grade of the tea. Right. Uh, similar with the yellow tea, you have um, uh, almost like Bai Hao Yingzheng, but only tea. Those are called the Huang Ya Cha, yellow okay. bud tea. And you also have a Huang Xiao Cha, which means it's one bud with one or two leaves. Okay. But you also have a Huang Da Cha, like these two. Okay. You would have um, one bud with uh, three leaves, two, three leaves, depending right. on the tea itself. Okay. Mm. And um, like Huang Da Cha, these are those kind of a representative teas. Uh, right. This one is uh, from Anhui, so you can know, it's sometimes known as uh, uh, Huoshan Huang Da Cha, and this one has a very unique process, uh, special to the region, is the last step. It's gotta be the roasting, am I right? Yes, yeah. give that a big fire and roasting. Right, yeah, and yeah. you get that on the nose right away. Yeah. But I had no idea that Da Yuqing, so now it, we, that's also in the Huang Da Cha category because it's one bud yes. with two or three leaf. Yes, 
And uh, this is from Guangdong province. Sometimes you will know as uh, Guangdong Da Ye Qing. So most mm. people, uh, if you have heard of a yellow tea, a lot of them probably know, uh, say, Junshan Yingzhen, uh, Huang, uh, Huoshan Huangya, or Mengding Huangya. Those mm. are considered... Definitely the, remember that one. Right. Those are considered yellow butt teas, uh, Huangya Cha. Okay, yeah, right. And right. those are very expensive. Uh, once I saw some right. place here was selling the Junshan Yingzhen, it's um, over three hundred dollars for uh, uh, an ounce, right. and that's probably the right price for that tea because right. how right. scarce it is. Not many people are making that. And those are the ones with those characteristic, um, th those subtle and wonderful, mm, um, really tasting green, mm. a tasting great tea. Uh, at some point, I don't even recommend people who just get into yellow right. tea to taste it because mm. it was. Uh, it's something you want to work your way up to, right? Yes, you want yes. to get your taste buds warmed up and start to learn how mm. to taste. Um, and and then... it could appear really similar to green tea taste, which mm -hmm. uh, sometimes can be dis discouraging. You know, it's like right. uh, you really spend the good money on that and you feel like uh, right. it really tastes like uh, just uh, another bud green tea, so right. that could be a little bit frustrating. Yeah. But from my experience with Mengding Huangya, definitely worth working your way up to. Mm, very, absolutely. very delightful. And those teas are, uh, because of that yellowing process, the most fill would be even deeper and smoother oh, yeah. than green tea. Mm -hmm. And also in the Huang Xiao Cha area, you would have some tea called, uh, many teas like um, uh, Lu Yuan Mao Jian. So that just to remind Sorry. me, that's the one bud, one leaf, right? So one to two leaf depends right, on right. the tea itself. Got it. Okay. Uh, but it's the middle one. Yes, the right. middle one. Got it. Yeah, like Lu Yuan Mao Jian, you will have a Wei Shan Bai Mao Jian, uh, Hai Ma Gong Cha, mm -hmm. or um, Bei Gang Mao Jian, right. uh, Pengyang Huang Tang. So these teas. Plenty of selection. Yes, but uh, not very popular, not all mentioned in the West. Uh, even in China, a lot of teas are disappearing because making uh, yellow tea is such a right. risk and extra work. Right, right. Mm. And uh, a lot of the areas of tea making are, is probably suffering the same way that the, the skills are also being lost. Like people are doing other things or doing the higher, uh, the easier, uh, how do I say that? <laughs> the ones that are easier to get to market with less risk. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. It, it is the, 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 the market who eventually, uh, yeah. you know, shift people's attention to those easy, less, uh, easier to make, easier to sell right, at right. some point. Booming aromas, lighter yes. oxidized, lighter roast. Because at some point, if the, it's understandable for farmers' perspective, right. if they spend a lot of time and risking, because if you don't do the yellowing properly, the whole batch would, would be wrong. Like, right, would be ruined. How should I say that? Like, imagining drying clothes. We have a dryer machine, it's very simple. Oh, but if you have that phase of leaving the clothes uh, right. uh, wet for, for a little bit longer, we, we probably are from pretty familiar with that stinkiness that right. comes from it. That's just, uh, you leave the clothes didn't dry for long. Right. You could generate that, but if it's a tea, if you didn't uh, dry or let it uh, yellow in properly, yeah. And those unpleasant to smell or taste, uh, nobody would buy that tea. Right. So basically, what they're shooting for is imagine if there was a perfect spot in the wet clothes where it smells even better. <laughs> but if you're five minutes too late, it's too late. They stink. You gotta rewash them. Yeah. But you cannot Sim rewash them. Simply by version <laughs> is like no, that I love because the metaphor. people, right? People. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. The the, the danger of uh, water and uh, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, time. So it's kind of understandable. So they, a lot of times they just make green tea. Right. Yeah. I'm careful to always start with the, mm -hmm. uh, my last tasting round, I started with the Huang Da Cha and right. it, it's a little bit Overwhelming for the diet. <laughs> I'm about to sip the one that as I put it right back. They're both quite seductive though. Once you smell them, it's tricky. Mm. 
I really like how the mouth feel of this is opening up. Mm. As we get into the later infusions, there's mm -hmm. still a there's still that lilting floral sweet mm. on the aroma, and the mouth feel is getting nice and thick, luscious. Mm. Metal. The, the floral has uh, changed a bit for me. It's less sweet, mm -hmm. more subdued. Now there's more like a metal, like a grass mingled with the mm. light, those white little flowers. You, you cannot even name what kind of uh, floral right, it is. Right. It's just uh, faintly there. Mm -hmm. I got kind of some fresh, like fresh straw too, a little bit more. That, uh, mm. Like when it's still um, just like, just bailed up, but still green kind of thing. Mm, this start to have a prune, <laughs> like the the snack we the snack we have wow. been having, like a prune. Mm. Date or prune? Plum. Plum. I changed my mind. Okay. Plum. Let me check when I see. Maybe the leaf might be more. Mm-hmm. You're right, hints of plum and plum flower maybe. Mm, like, this one is the same cultivar as a uh, uh, in-home number nine, ah, which has that uh, right. uh, poor elements there. Right, right. So you... Makes sense, right? suddenly. It didn't appear at all in the early infusions. No. It's just this one, right? That's right, Not impossible to detect that sort of... Um, yeah, I didn't have any plum or those stone fruit characteristics right, in the right, early phase. Fruit, yeah. Well, that's what we see, uh, that's what we say, like tea, the more you brew it to the end, it, it presents you their original form. Right, right. Sort of like how, uh, how an, a really old shampooar will come back to its gold, mm, right? Mm. Mm. Different phases of the tea brewing really presents different information. Wow, really different experiences. Two great experiences with yellow tea, though. Same with this infusion. I found mm. the, the the toastiness that uh, uh, how should I say? Like uh, the process that given this tea was more manifested in the early infusion. While this right. one, not saying the full process, the roasting process. This one is more have revealed more of that yellowing. Uh, elements which is uh, uh, less edge, like the taste right, was more rounder, rounder right. um, mellower, mellow or mouthfeel, I would say, rather mm. than taste. Yeah, yeah. Well, I know almost every video we talk about those uh, different tea types or different teas. Many people would ask, how do I choose a good tea? How do I choose mm. a, a right yellow tea? Because uh, for tea leaves to appear yellow, it can be yellow tea, it can be right. stale, stale green, green tea. tea right? You know, you put mm. a green tea a couple of years, it also turns uh, yellow. How do people know? How? What are the tips? Well, uh, in terms of yellow tea, it is very, it is a very tricky part because how similar it is to green tea. Mm -hmm. So at a certain point, if you are looking for um, like uh, buds only, like Huang Ya Cha buds, like Junshan Yinzhen, Huoshan Huang Ya, or uh, Meng Ding Huang Ya, right. uh, price is definitely a great reference point. We currently don't ca uh, carry any of these teas, but right. uh, we have every now and then we carry. Uh, uh, a very limited quantity yes. of those uh, buds only um, yellow teas and the price are not cheap and when you look around that's one of the major thing I would mention is uh, yeah they're just so scarce they're just really hard yeah, to come by it's really uh, almost uh, impossible to come up uh, to see a cheap but authentic yellow bud teas mm -hmm. so price is 
one of the、uh, thing you can simply figure out is that possible to be real. But of course, high price doesn't guarantee that it's a real thing. That's right. And then if you're gonna Uh, fork over all that cash. You're probably going to want to make sure you have a trusted vendor,、mm -hmm. because that's probably the best thing you can have to make sure you're getting an authentic yellow tea. Yeah. All right. So that was two very different yellow teas. Even though we just found out they're both technically in the Huangda Cha yellow tea category. Yeah. We have the Huangda Cha Huangda Cha, <laughs> which was characterized by its sort of chocolatey coffee aroma, and then those multi. Bold flavors,、mm. and in the end,、uh, relinquishing to more of the yellow, softer flavors. Really,、right. really、um, lovely tea. Right. Well, the、uh, Da Yeqing is more、uh, soft, smooth mouthfeel、mm. with a really、uh, pleasant、uh, sweetness、oh, that、yes. lingering on the nose and、mm -hmm. the taste,、uh, as well as the floral,、uh, a very refreshing.、Uh, Lovely floral notes. That is not overwhelming.、Mm -hmm. So、um, mm, later on, with a little bit of grain touch, like、mm -hmm. a little bit of soft hay aroma and、right. meadowland. So meadowland, <laughs> meadow, meadow. Yeah, kind of、okay. meadowy. Yeah, not meadowland, right? That's a road beside our <laughs> neighborhood. <laughs> Anyway, I hope the、uh, the tastings and our tasting notes is helpful for you guys to choose these two teas, and I hope you can you know make the selection and choose the one that probably、uh, suits you suits the best. Suits you the best, or even go ahead and have them side by side like what we're doing right now. Yeah, that would be my pick. I could never choose. So if you like the video, please、uh, give it a thumbs up. It really helps the channel grow.、Mm -hmm. And if you want to help the channel grow even more and help your tea habit grow as well, you can grab these teas. They're in the links down below, and from there you'll be able to find all kinds of other teas on our website. Absolutely! Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. And until next time, keep steeping. <laughs>